Okay, well, the next thing you need to be aware of are your sight lines. So everything that you can see behind me, you need to be able to see at all times in the lesson. So a classic mistake will be this. I can see some students here and I get down to engage with them and I'm looking at them, which means my sight lines are just them. I may see that bit of the class, but I ignore the rest. Very often teachers will have seating arrangements which forces them to be out of the sight line. So for example, there's a desk here which is facing inwards. There you go, here it is. I'm engaging with these two kids now. And you can see the whole of the rest of the class is totally outside of my sight line. And that is a recipe for disaster. So instead, I'm going to move around and engage with these students here. So I can still see the rest of the room. Okay? Uh, I'll obviously, I might do it from a higher position so that I can still see the rest of the room. That is crucial. And so, let's imagine I come here. I'm going to stand in such a way that I can still angle and see the rest of the room. So my sight lines are absolutely crucial. Now there is another thing that will change the way I hope that you think about teaching. Because you've seen me pretend to speak to this pair and pretend to speak to that pair, but actually every time I engage with my pairs, I run the risk of other students going off task. So actually, my main job when I'm going round is to watch the students. I'm listening to what they say, to hear misconceptions, to hear common problems. I'm looking at what they're doing to make sure they're on task. And then I'm drawing some conclusions about when I need to stop. Uh, we'll get onto that in an assessment video. But what that means is, when I'm going around the room, I am not teaching. I'm learning. I'm seeing what the kids are learning. And then I'm planning when I react to that. Not two people at a time here, two people at a time there, two people at a time there. But whole class. Right. I come back to the front. I draw them all in. And then I have my teaching moment based on what I've seen not two people at a time. So the easiest way I can think of to help you remember that is a decorating analogy. Um, if I'm teaching my class, I really want to be thinking that I'm decorating with a roller. With a roller, I'm covering as much of the wall as I can. I want to cover as much of the room as I can. I can still paint that wall um, a little square at a time with a paintbrush. It would be perfectly neat but it would take me a long, long time. And that's what happens when you go around individual people, you're painting the learning a square at a time. That just is super slow and also leads to all the other squares, all the other bits of learning thinking, teacher's not paying attention to me, I can do what I like. Whereas if I'm patrolling and I'm broadly painting across the whole classroom, I will then see the bits where the paint hasn't caught in this analogy, where the learning hasn't caught, and then I can come back to the front and address those common issues that I've seen. Here's where the learning is patchy. Now I'm going to teach you all about this. Okay, and it's much, much more efficient because it's quicker, but it's also much more efficient because students don't go off task because they know you're watching.